informal learning is changing because there are, there are a lot of changes, but let's kind of give some, let's characterise them in some way. I think rather than saying that formal learning is changing, perhaps another way of phrasing that is saying we're moving into a post-institutional phase of learning, that learning is not a thing that you go into the educational system to do, but learning is something that you can do anywhere. The reason we tend to call formal learning formal is that it gives you some kind of qualifications and in order to get those qualifications you have to go through some kind of quality approved process which is usually related to an institution and that institution may be uh, a degree awarding body or a body that awards qualifications that comes from kind of some kind of external entity like the national curriculum and various examination boards in the UK. Um, the reason why we have education around institutions grew up uh, with the developing in Europe anyway, of the Paris University, although there were Arab universities before that, uh, and was to do with the institution just as an institution is a metaphor for where, um, where education takes place. It's not the learning process. I think everything's changing because of the introduction of the web and its participative and collaborative uh, qualities that you can use with various kind of web tools, particularly, particularly discussion groups. And you go back to Socrates, uh, seeing how we have a Greek context for this question, you go back to Socrates and look at his conversational model of learning. And I think learning is as much as anything else conversational, but it's also uh, doing and learning. There's also a, a thought now that actually learning is something that occurs beyond the institution or part of the institution. And it's about people's activities and the social processes and collaborative activities that they engage in. And I would describe informal learning as being about interest-driven learning rather than curriculum driven learning and that's where the change is occurring. So one of the ways that I've been involved in of dealing with the changes that the tools and the processes that the internet enables and the web enables is something that we developed in 2007 called the Open Context Model of Learning. We called it the Open Context Model of, of Learning because uh, we're a group that thinks learning comes out of the context and the context in which that learning occurs. And at that time the Open University were launching their Open Learn initiative and we thought, hmm, that's interesting, but it needs a pedagogy. We need a post-web pedagogy. Uh, and, and also, if we take the view that learning happens everywhere and it's interest driven, you need to have something that works in a, in a range of contexts. So the open context model of learning is a multi-context co-creation model of learning, which is based on fusing the learning approaches in a range of contexts, which includes schools, which is pedagogically uh, driven, which is around the understanding of the subjects. Nothing wrong with that, but it's quite limiting if that's all you do. It's about andragogy, which is about the collaborative processes that you tend to see in community learning. And it's about hertagogy, which is either the kind of creative learning you get in art school or the kind of research-driven learning that you get in a postdoctoral. Uh, approach. Our view with the Open Context Model of Learning is that you can fuse all the different types of learning by getting people to focus on a subject or their interest to work collaboratively and be creative about the way they present their learning. So one of the outcomes of implementing the Open Context Model of Learning might be described that uh, we develop hertagogic learners or perhaps that's better phrased as a self-directed learner and that has consequences for the teacher and the learner. Uh, we actually think that teachers need to understand the craft of teaching which actually takes a few years to, to develop because they need to be able to deliver their subject, enable collaboration to occur and recognise original uh, approaches to learning and that's where the hertagogy kicks in and to be a hertagogy learner you need to be creative in the way that you present uh, your learning which could be done around projects or original ways of presenting information. I often use an example of a student of mine who was a cartoonist who did an information system for business as a cartoon. Uh, which I now have framed on my wall at home because it was so good and so funny that I sh uh, and I show it to people and they say but you can't let students invent their way of presenting uh, resources and say well if you look at this this is better information systems diagram than anybody did by just drawing an information systems diagram and it's a cartoon with jokes in it. The hertagogic learner expresses learning creatively. How can we recognise the creative expression of learning? 